Okay, this is the uh, the website uh, for the equipment that I bought for treating our whole house uh, to eliminate impurities and like chlorine, along with uh, got the additional fluoride master combo filter. Been using this about two years and just replaced the uh, the media in the fluoride master this weekend. So uh, let me walk you through what I found out. It's quite interesting. Okay, we're going to check our outside water sample. So we drop our tablet in and then we uh, crush it up, shake, let the sample sit for a little bit, and then we'll take our read. Okay, we're going to stick our sample in and we've got it on. It should go into the whole load. Oh, awesome. That is showing that we are up around 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Okay, this is this is the whole house uh, water filtration system. Uh, it's got two tanks. The uh, second tank, which I replaced yesterday uh, with new fluoride media in it, uh, is the one that we're testing right now. Now we're going to take a pan a sample of our tap water and we just reduce it down to about 20 milliliters so it doesn't overflow. And let's go check it now. Okay, now we're going to add our TISAB tablet to our uh, sample of uh, water that's been through the filtration system and then we'll take a reading from that. This is a uh, Pretty incredible. I mean, I'm getting a, I've done two readings this morning just to check and make sure that there is not a uh, problem with my meter, but I am getting zero fluoride presence uh, after uh, replacing the fluoride filter. So, um, wow. I mean, they've, uh, they've really upgraded uh, uh, their technology and um, yeah, I'm happy with it. Okay, if you want to know kind of how I ended up with the uh, Vitalis uh, whole house filtration system, uh, I mean, I'll show you a little bit on, on why I would be concerned about fluoride. I'm not going to go into an extensive amount of detail, but let's just suffice that I care. So I want to take it out of my water. Uh, and I want to do it whole house because you bathe in the stuff and it can absorb into your skin that way as well. Uh, most of the options that you look at are going to be either to use reverse osmosis to take it out or use some type of a bone char filter like the one that I gave you the, uh, the, the demonstration of and the samples from. Uh, that one is significantly less expensive than reverse osmosis and as well reverse osmosis tends to about double the amount of water that you use. So, you know, it's wasteful. I, I had one for 25 years and that was my experience with using that one. Now let's talk about a little bit about why I care. This is 10 years of daily data uh, from Dallas Water Utilities that uh, provides water to 44 different municipalities in the DFW area. These are the daily readings. Uh, as you look at this, the EPA currently says that 0.7 uh, parts per million is something that they consider safe. Uh, there's quite a bit of additional science. You can go look at it out at the Fluoride Action Network if you want to get into the details of it. Uh, but things like, uh, in fact, there's you know two doctors that have written a book uh, recently on what's impacting thyroid, and they came to the conclusion that it is uh, fluoride in all the different ways that we get it, including the water. Uh, and they use uh, they came to the conclusion that anything above 0.3 parts per million starts to impact your thyroid. Uh, so those were those numbers come from. So bottom line, I'm concerned. I want to take it out. Uh, it's not um, uh, overly expensive when you can compare doing a whole house system with you know just replacing uh, fluoride filters that you put under your sink. The other reason that I'm concerned, and this is also from 10 years of numbers in Dallas, if you look at the amount of fluoride that is in our raw water, that's before it's ever treated with hydrofluorosilic acid. Uh, if you look at all three plants, you can tell from, you know, all the way back to 2004 through the end of uh, 
2014 and on to actually into 2015, I've got the same trends on those numbers, is all three plants and the raw water coming into them, you see the amount of fluoride is continuing to go up. Uh, so I don't see any indicators showing that that's curtailing at all. So it will continue to be a problem in the future. And this is a problem, you know, even if we go back to, you know, you think the ADA and the AMA and the EPA and everybody has approved this. Uh, when you start digging back into all of the documents, you'll find out that they really haven't. Here's one from 1960 from the American Medical Association. You can read it. Uh, there's a little bit of doublespeak to it, but it basically says the AMA uh, is not prepared to uh, support that no harm will be done to any person by water fluoridation or the community water fluoridation program, uh, and that they haven't carried through any research on the long-term or short-term effects uh, regarding the possibility of any side effects, and that's from way back in 1965. And there really hasn't been anything that's changed since then. So you can decide what you want to do, but uh, I decided it's uh, easier and cheaper to go ahead and take the, uh, the fluoride out of my water and not be concerned about any future health impacts from it. So thanks for watching.